Good afternoon from Nairobi. This is eight minutes past two p.m. right here, and um, that's like eight minutes late. But welcome, welcome, welcome to day nine of uh, fourteen days of February, and I tell you, it's been amazing, amazing, amazing. This nine days, we've learned so much, so so much. We've had had wonderful guests who've shared with us amazing things, and. Um, there's so much to learn about mental wellness and self-care. And just to be looking at different topics, different things from different um, speakers. And my goodness, this has, been, this has been super duper amazing. And today, day nine, I am so excited to host my guest. And I know she'll be joining me anytime from now because we're talking about childhood trauma and how that can affect your mental wellness and the truth is those things that we sweep under the carpet they never go away until we face them until we decide that we are going to deal with them you're going to wake up and decide to actually handle them seek help where we need to they never go away so i'm excited that uh, my guest is going to help be helping us to understand um childhood trauma and also how to find healing and i'm excited hi vika she's already here okay uh, yeah just please send me a request to join uh, to join the live then i'll just add you yeah so if you're going to be watching this right now or you're going to be watching this later uh, the recording will be on my page um yeah feel free to ask if you have any questions please feel free to uh, to send a dm and uh yeah if you need any kind of help yeah we're also here to help so please free, free, feel free and my guest is here and yeah i'm really excited to have this conversation and to get right into it hey vika Hi, can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I cannot see you. I think your camera is, is on the other side. Is, is, um... Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> hang on a minute. Let me see. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. Hi, Vika. You look so lovely. Good to see you. Hello. No, I think you look so lovely. Let me just uh, wipe <laughs> off my camera a little bit. Sorry. Oh, okay. Hopefully that will All be right. clearing up a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, because cause that I can see you, but I can see you halfway. Like you're not. It's not really nicely. Yes, I think that's better. Although there's some light that's um, maybe see. where you is this better? better. Uh, yes, that looks much better. Absolutely, but much better. Oh, we no. want to be able your beautiful face and and to also just uh, flow together with you so i'm excited about today and i'm so excited to be to be hosting you today vika and i know this conversation is very interesting and also very important because childhood trauma is something that cannot be ignored and i was just saying before you came in it's something that we can't sweep under the carpet things that happen to us uh, um difficult things that children go through when they're growing up if they're not dealt with then they follow them up and possibly affect their mental wellness so before okay. we get started we love to start with a word of prayer because this is day nine of our 14 days so we've been having so far we've had uh eight guests so you're the ninth guest and i'm super excited to be hosting you today and also to learn one or two things from you so we're going to pray first then we're gonna get started all right okay. thank you sure. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness today. Thank you for being with us, Lord. And thank you for Vika, Lord. And thank you that uh, she uh, she gave us her time today to just be able to go through today's topic and to enlighten us and also to guide us uh, to find how ways we can be able to seek help when it comes to childhood trauma. I pray for everyone who will be joining us today and everyone who will be listening, that, Lord, they will find this helpful and those who are struggling with uh, difficulties and childhood traumas, that they'll be able to find help. For this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So as Amen. we get started, uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and also tell us a bit of what you do. So yes, everyone. So my name is Vika Valentina. So I come from Indonesia. 
uh, but originally my grandparents, everyone coming from China, that's probably why you will see me in fair skin and different looking face rather than most Indonesians. I don't know what, how familiar you are all with Indonesian faces, but yes, I'm Indonesian. So um, my a little bit of my background, um, I am an L NLP practitioner. I'm a positive mm -hmm. psychology enthusiast, but also at the yeah. same time, I love everything that has to do with children, with trauma, with well-being, with mental health, with health, anything to do with human beings. The reason is because I think we all, as human beings, we all have amazing potentials. And a lot of mm -hmm. times when we see um, problems that happens in our lives, even as simple as, let's say, financial problems mm -hmm. that happens to a lot of people very easily, right? And mm -hmm. uh, any kind of problems that happens in our reality world is basically a reflection of our mental state of mind. So basically, wow. uh, just imagine that anything that has to do with our reality world, our physical world, is actually mm -hmm. a mirror of our mental state of mind. So one of the first things that we need to fix in this world is a matter of our state of mind, which is our mindset, our belief. That's how we perceive the world. Maybe, maybe in short, I guess I will say in a way that uh, I believe a lot of you guys have heard or have seen the picture of mm -hmm. a, a lion who 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 is facing a mirror, and that yeah. lion what what that lion sees uh, as a reflection from that mirror <laughs> is actually a cat, right? Oh, so whatever that we see, yeah, whatever that we see in that mirror everything is subjective to our mindset very very subjective so if a cat is standing in front of a mirror and the cat is seeing itself as a lion obviously wow. that's very possible so so how does this lion and cat thing will be related to this Vika to I mean to this childhood trauma and us as adults, obviously the very basic thing, whether we are talking about childhood trauma or not, is that mm -hmm. whether our mindset is positive or not, it is reflected in that mirror of reality. So that's a little bit of my background. I'm afraid I'm, I will keep on talking and it will be like, keep on going and it will be like in the middle of the session already. <laughs> so here you go, Joy. Um, I'm really, really happy to share today with you all. Um, this is my first time to actually do any IG live. So uh, uh -huh. I will probably have to apologize if there is anything to do if I have some technical problems or maybe sometimes I get a little bit confused maybe if there's some technical things about IG live. But I will definitely try to be staying in the topic uh, and I'll try to give you all the meat for this 60 minutes in the coming um, time. Wow, wow. I just love the way you've started us off. That was amazing. I mean, I just want to listen and listen and I totally love the analogy of, you know, the, the, the cat that looks in the mirror and sees a lion. So, and actually to start, maybe you could help us understand what is childhood trauma? Because actually... It's uh, maybe someone is actually uh, struggling with childhood trauma. Maybe they're struggling with something right now in their adult age. And, and maybe it could be their mental health or maybe they struggle with something. But what they don't know it is, is that probably that could be a reflection of a childhood, something that happened in their childhood that they actually have, have no idea that it's affecting them. Or maybe they actually have never told anyone and, and maybe they just sweep, swept it under the carpet and they thought, you know, everything is okay or it's going to go away, but it keeps following them. Please uh, help us understand when we talk about childhood trauma, what do we mean exactly? Okay, so let's actually break it down into two parts where childhood mm -hmm. and trauma. Let's start with the That's trauma right. word itself first, okay? Mm -hmm. So trauma mm -hmm. itself is um, trauma itself is a part where we basically feel that it's something that's uncomfortable 
But oftentimes, mm -hmm. remember, you know, we have parts of our health that is probably uncomfortable. Let's say we have gas in the stomach, or mm -hmm. whether we actually migraines. As much as possible. But often we we are so uh, making our pain into mm -hmm. a habit, into a part of us. And I think yeah. uh, trauma can be like that too, where, like you said, we sweep it under the rug, and we yeah. think as if like it doesn't exist or non-existent. Yeah. It does exist. Yeah. Like there is yeah. no one with hundred percent perfect health. And it's mm. the same with our mental health in our mind. Yeah. There's no mm. one that actually perfect 100%. So obviously, there's always going to be trauma in our life. And trauma always matters mm. of the way how we interpret things is not exactly like how we uh, ideally want it to be. That's already creating a trauma. So that's yeah. trauma itself. And childhood, basically, it happens either it's eight years or younger, usually. So in the hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. um, this is not a theory, but this is what most hypnotherapists believed, uh, that our subconscious mind, sorry that I don't have paper with me, but just, um, just uh, imagine together with me, okay? So imagine mm -hmm. that our mind have three levels of mind. Mm -hmm. So imagine that they are in a shape that like um, three kinds of circles. So the first part yeah. of the circle in the middle is small, considerably small. And then the second part is kind of like in the middle and it's considerably medium sized. And the last part obviously is the size of our brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, in the hypnotherapy, we have mm -hmm. these three layers of minds. The first part, the first circle in the middle, is the unconscious mind. The second layer is the subconscious mind. The third mm -hmm. layer is the conscious mind, which is our frontal lobe, or our mm -hmm. frontal brain. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, why do I bring this up? Because when mm -hmm. we are in our childhood, yes. what's actually been activated the most is the unconscious mind and the mm -hmm. middle part, which is the subconscious mind. Yeah, and it it doesn't mean that the conscious mind is not there. The conscious mind is there, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest layer is there, but it's sort of like having no separation, having no doors, no windows between one layer to another. So obviously, mm -hmm. imagine that those three circles are like um, like balls. Obviously, it mm -hmm. will go into the deepest part of the bowl to to kind of like to fill it up first fill your cup mm -hmm. first, right? So obviously, mm -hmm. whatever that happens in our childhood, it will go through and straight go to the unconscious mind yeah. and also the subconscious mm -hmm. mind. And it will be implanted as if like it's a blueprint. So uh, when does our mind, these three layers will start to have separators or doors and windows that I call, right? Mm -hmm. Starting at the age of eight years old. That's when we yeah. started to build the separators and thinking that, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. I don't really need everything to go right into my vulnerable part of the mind because yeah. I, I just want to protect myself. Hence, oftentimes, like, for example, I will ask you, Joy, how far behind can you remember your, your childhood? Like, uh, what is the first age that you remember from your memory? Mm -hmm. what age were you yeah i think that the best the best memories i have is when i was um when i was in primary school that i was that was in class two so that means i was around five or six years okay six year old see that's very yes. common and that is why um we have those layers because it's mm -hmm. not that we actually have forgotten those memories when we were babies when we were one-year-olds. No, we haven't forgotten them. It's like what yeah. you said, it's sweep under the rug. It needs to be digged. So it takes time for us to be more aware of that mm -hmm. part of the unconscious mind and our subconscious mind of ours. So combining together yeah. about childhood brain or childhood mindsets and the trauma itself, 
whatever mm -hmm. trauma, whatever upsetness, whatever whatever upsetting conditions, and whatever uh, what bad condition mm -hmm. that we have to go through in terms of trauma yeah. in our childhood will be more than likely 90% of the time will be implanted into our subconscious mind and our mm -hmm. sorry unconscious mind and our subconscious mind which means mm -hmm. it will just affect our blueprint of our mindset and that's mm -hmm. what it's all about about childhood trauma when it becomes part of our blueprint which means equals to negative beliefs when it's equal to negative beliefs which means it's our yeah. negative mindset and remember about what we talked about the mirror of reality if mm -hmm. it's negative the output or the mirror of reality that we see on the mirror about ourselves yeah. is going to be negative of course Because obviously yeah. not all of it not all of it there are parts mm -hmm. of our childhood memory that are beautiful even though maybe mm -hmm. we don't remember them too consciously but it doesn't mean anything that we cannot remember it always means that probably it's all negative no it's not but uh mm -hmm. remember this uh it's all a mystery of that part of our childhood and we better mm -hmm. to if we don't know we better to actually take the preca precaution that we might we might be better to do something about it just in mm -hmm. case just in case that we do have that childhood trauma even though it's still not very clear or maybe unknown to us so yeah. uh childhood trauma whether we remember them or not mm. often yes. it will just affect our somatic level somatic level which means it will affect us on the physical level because those are memories and those memories trying to talk to us trying mm -hmm. to make ourselves to be more conscious about those memories and make us to do something about it and that's why when our body speaks to us in a way that maybe we get some uh uncomfortableness maybe we we have a lot of disease maybe we have a lot of health conditions listen to your body and listen to your own conscious consciousness right we probably yourself in all levels of minds trying to speak to you as an adult self he is trying to say there's something that you need to heal about yourself mm. now let's say we're not going to dig very deep into it because sometimes yeah. it can be painful and it it will be very personal right every single person will have different interpretation different level of um painfulness so mm. today what we are going to talk about not only about childhood trauma but more importantly i'm always a believer about why why talk about something if it's not going to lead us into one kind of solution at least all a uh, solution it doesn't mean that one size fits all right but at least mm -hmm. we try and at mm -hmm. least we tell ourselves that we are actually trying hey hey myself i'm listening to you i'm listening i'm trying to do something i'm trying to do something yeah. even though i don't remember everything i just want mm -hmm. to do something for myself at least that's all Wow, wow, impressive. My goodness, there's so much to learn. There's so much to learn about that and I just like the way you have explained it. And, and you know when you asked me about, you know, how far I can remember back into my childhood, you know, I was trying to like um what about the things I don't remember, you know? Uh because I I I wonder when the things that happen to a child maybe when they are 2 years old. Will they ever remember maybe when they grow up? because and uh, one of the things that i have seen especially uh, with adoption because i have i have worked with adoption before where children i see possible people have to adopt um children who are younger below 2 years or 1 year and the reasons mm -hmm. well not all not all but some of, some people will adopt younger children so that they don't remember so that they grow up in this family knowing that they are part of this family so and Uh, most of them don't really remember that part of their childhood 
until maybe someone tells them you know until maybe someone in the family tells them oh you know you are doctor you are not born here and really they cannot reconcile they can't remember you know they have to start looking for the truth so is it when someone is guided are they able to remember things that happened to them below 60 years you know is it possible or that stays in the in the in the unconscious subconscious mind Okay so the answer is yes and no it depends on the level of resistance of oneself so mm-hmm. each person will have levels of resistance the reason why mm-hmm. le- resistance happens although no matter how curious you are about the past or about yourself mm-hmm. considerably we all human beings we are habitual creatures which means we like to be in our comfort zone knowing mm-hmm. more doesn't mean it will give us more comfort it doesn't always mean that way and often times mm-hmm. resistance happens because it's trying to protect ourselves from the shock from the surprise mm-hmm. from the unknown from the mysterious stuff mm-hmm. right so yeah. some people who are to be honest less resistance than than the other are guided easily uh even even during hypnotherapy session and mm-hmm. even during conscious talk sometimes it can be just like friends to friends talk as simple as mm-hmm. that but yes yeah. again um people can be guided to know more about their past and know about know more about oneself about themselves mm-hmm. from guidance whether it's from someone who is having more wisdom whether it's from mm-hmm. a counselor from a health professionals mm-hmm. sometimes even with books and to be honest what i found most of the times happening um when i see clients that mm-hmm. if people are resisting to be guided yeah. if people mm-hmm. are resisting to be questioned uh and to be helped often times yeah. one of the most uh one of the most effective things to be done is that for themselves to be guiding themselves how mm-hmm. through books through reading because when we are reading when we are mm-hmm. listening when we are watching video or let's say maybe now fond of reading books as such right yes. uh, when we are watching videos when we are listening to seminars listening to i don't know maybe some kind of use, useful information something that interests you in terms of mental health topics yeah we are basically telling ourselves in mm-hmm. some conscious subconscious way you know when you are reading you are actually yeah. talking to yourself because you are reading out loud well sometimes mm-hmm. reading softly in your mind and that's kind yeah. of like there will be a moment where we call it as aha moment or sometimes the moments of deja vu of feeling like wow how come this feels like it's a click like like it feels so familiar or how come mm. it kind of like draws me into it yeah so you got to pay attention to those kind of moments where mm. nothing happens so coincidentally so everything mm. happens for a reason obviously yeah. every single moment that you feel clicked you feel aha and you feel mm. like uh it draws you into it there must be something mm-hmm. that's related to your mindset where yeah. if it's related to your mindset it must be related to your childhood too oh okay wow oh my goodness wow that is quite interesting so now how do we how can you um call out what are the signs and symptoms that can help us tell you know maybe me as a person or i can see maybe someone else is actually struggling from something that is related to childhood trauma what are the signs that can you know that you can observe and maybe think you know maybe this could be something related to something that happened to someone when they were growing up okay so one of the first symptoms that we can see easier is through the physical level not that i'm okay. saying that somebody has to be ugly or not no not that way but in in a yes. physical level because if something happens already in your physical level which means yes whatever mindset or whatever memories of your childhood trauma 
is trying mm -hmm. to speak to you in a way that it wants somebody else, the outside world, trying to speak to you and remind you about that. Not about the physical appearance, but it's sometimes yeah. about, let's say, into a somatic level. Somatic level, which means like uh, you will start to have health problems, uh, diseases, or um, low level of immune system, um, mm -hmm. tendency, of, tendency of unhealthy choices. Maybe like mm -hmm. smoking, drinking, binging, right? Mm -hmm. Eating too much, or just anything to do that you know that it's not good. If it's too much, you know that it's not good, but you still want it. That's on the physical level. Seems like that your body is so craving for it. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, that's probably a sign. Because your body is probably craving for something that's not good because it's a reflection of yeah. the not so good belief about yourself mm -hmm. that you have to choose something that's not that's not so good for you in order for you to create the pain for yourself right investing a little bit chipping a little bit and more and more and more so then and later mm -hmm. on you will start to have somewhat of more painful physical uh, reality rather than others mm -hmm. Okay, so pay attention to your physical health because probably uh, that's the way your mind is trying to speak to you. That's number one. So number two, um, obviously behind our physical exterior, there's mental, mm -hmm. there's feeling, yeah. emotion, and there's mindset, which is beliefs mm -hmm. about ourselves, right? Um, yeah. So our mental or our emotions and our mindset uh, level mm -hmm. state of mind can be reflected in the words that we are talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. or yes. our preferences in topics that we watch, um, things that we prefer to do, things like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, have you ever met anyone who often says, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> yes. um, uh, maybe I don't know, yeah, okay, so anything that we say, no matter how accidental it is, or no matter how habitual it is, it's yeah. a reflection of your belief, of your emotion. Wow. The moment that you say so many times about, I don't know, and mm -hmm. in that moment, you can tell that person obviously is shutting down their own ability to know more about themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't. Okay. They're trying to shut down. I don't, and they probably also will be a person that is trying to shut down to not wanting to know very deeply about mm -hmm. the universe or maybe about others, right? So yeah. let's pay attention to our words, the, the more yeah. habitual one. Sometimes it's very hard if we are trying to mm -hmm. pay attention to ourselves because we say it so often that we actually don't think it matters anymore. So yeah. it, it matters when you are having your own best friend and your best friends will actually tell you, I think I noticed that you actually often say this or say that. Mm -hmm. uh, or let's say... Uh, if they try to say, um, mm -hmm. I hate when people do this, do da da da. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's yeah, a reflection. Okay, a lot of people of say that. They mm -hmm. Sorry? I, I've actually had a lot of people say that. You know, I don't like when people do this. I don't know what, like when people say this. So, and I've never given it more attention actually to find out why, but yeah. Yeah, so so if we pay more attention to the words that people choose, also mm -hmm. we will tr we will be able to find those symptoms. For example, in a situation where you are late for work, let's say, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's uh, accidental or whether it's something that because your own fault, okay? It doesn't really matter. The words of how they respond to their situation at the time will reflect yeah. of what kind of belief that they have. 
one person mm -hmm. might going to say, I will do better, or this is only just going to happen just one time, and I will definitely fix it. Some people will say, this is the type of blamer, will say, um, this, if, if that person or if my husband, if my wife didn't do this, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have been late today. Or let's say a person who's full of guilt or shame will also mm -hmm. probably say, um, this is all my fault. I'm really, 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 really sorry. Um, I could, I, 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 just, I just didn't know how to actually be a good employee. So pay attention to the words that we often say. So yeah. one situation, but there are many, many ways on how we can actually respond to it and how we choose the, the right words. So that's yeah. level two, right? First level is the physical level. Second level yeah. is the mental or mental yeah. level. And the third level is obviously what most uh, hypnotherapists also uh, practically doing it and believe in it which is at the unconscious level, which is okay. our dreams. Mm -hmm. um, in many researches actually stated that all human beings have dreams every single night. Um, oh, wow. Whether the fact that oftentimes for myself, I don't remember my dreams. When I'm waking up, I don't actually know what my dreams are. Just actually last night. But in fact, everyone dreams mm -hmm. every single night mm -hmm. and dreams is a reflection of your unconscious state of mind and for some people who actually can remember their dreams just by the time they're waking up pretty lucky yeah because you can learn a lot from your own dreams mm -hmm. sometimes dreams can be a reflection of whatever that already happened the, in the previous day and your dreams are just trying to digest everything and creating a scene to make mm -hmm. your sleep is more interesting and sometimes <laughs> it's in a way that your unconscious mind is trying to speak to you to give you warnings and those mm -hmm. warnings sometimes can be very very useful that maybe your dreams is definitely a very telepathic way of reminding you of something that is so urgent in that mm -hmm. dream. So those are the three levels. Obviously, the level three, which is about the dream, is very hard for us to see the symptoms, right? Because we don't really yeah. know about someone else's dream. Not even probably oneself <laughs> can remember the dream. But dreams can be yeah. very, very useful. But the uh, so but that's interesting levels. because so, mm -hmm. the, yeah so the most uh, so obvious one is obviously the physical level yeah yeah no I just wanted to ask you because uh, as what you're saying is so interesting and I'm just uh, uh, remembering about those people who dream you know dreams like where they're just being chased away you know <laughs> uh, people. <laughs> You know, someone running after you, uh, some uh, some being chased by a lion, chased by a snake, you know. You know, because I, I, I do discuss about dreams with my mom a lot, and sometimes she will tell me, oh, today I had this bad dream. And sometimes I'm like, I'm trying to make sense of it and, 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 and wondering what could be the unconscious mind, you know, what could be the dream. <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah, yeah, that's right yeah because sometimes those dreams can be telling us about the sense of urgency that uh trying to wake us up on our sense of urgency about something that we really have to mm -hmm. take care of sometimes they can be only a release of whatever nonsense anxiety that we had in the previous day yeah uh, like a okay your mindset especially the negative beliefs one is creating a lot of inputs, like when you're cooking, right? So when you're mm. eating rubbish, you have to make an output into the toilet. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And drink yeah. sometimes can be a release, a release of those negative uh, output that mm. hasn't been fully. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's so it's so stuck inside that mentally it's bloated, right? So dreams are a good way 
of not only resting your body from carrying a lot of burdens and negative beliefs, but also of uh, in a way that it's it has to flush out those anxiety uh, in a way that look if you are keep thinking in this negative belief this is what you're going to face in your dreams so from morning until night time when you sleep you don't even face something that's pretty nice to you would you like to have more beautiful dreams obviously then think about better things think about better beliefs think about more yeah. positive beliefs Mm-hmm. better input more positive input is yes. positive output in the reality and in the dreams yes absolutely i totally like that it's just like we learn in computer garbage in garbage out so yeah it's good to watch yeah. what you, <laughs> you, you can't keep yeah. everything inside all the time yeah cuz everything is flowing and everything in our universe mm-hmm. is a matter of energy and energy is flowing anything that the energy is not flowing which is stuck it means dead right it means no life mm-hmm. so if yeah. we want to stay alive then our energy has to be flowing in a way that there's in there's out mm-hmm. there's in there's out it has to keep mm-hmm. on doing that when you have yeah. starting to have like negative inputs from your external world you got to let yeah. it out Mm-hmm. you got to let it out somehow there are many ways to do it obviously wow that is absolutely amazing now uh let's go to the healing part of it you know if maybe uh, someone is there and they they really realize there's a lot of this science you've told us you know to pay attention to the physical to the mental the emotions and the feelings and the mindset and also the unconscious so if someone is really feeling like avika i don't know maybe we lost you um yeah i think that's because yeah i think you, i was just connected a little bit i'm sorry thing. yeah i okay. your camera oh yeah sorry i was just connected <laughs> a little bit sorry so so anyway what i was asking is uh, help us to understand if someone has identified with the signs that we have shared that you have shared with us and they feel yes there are particular things in their life that are a, re- a reflection of the childhood trauma or maybe things they went through when they were growing up that are actually affecting them uh what would you advise in terms of finding healing what steps can they begin to take to walk the journey of finding help and you know being able to deal with that Okay. Obviously, the first thing to do, it's hard to fight alone. Let's imagine that this world or the situation that yes. we are all facing, or let's say for for all of you who are actually listening right now and you are currently having a lot of burden from your childhood trauma or whatever it is, right? Yeah. If imagine your life is like a war game. Yeah? Mhm. And it really yes. depends in the war how many of your enemies in their in 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 their battle obviously it really mm-hmm. depends on how how many negative beliefs that you have how many yeah. bad situations that you you have already been through in your life it really depends one person probably has to fight that war with 10 imagine mm-hmm. like if it's a war game with 10 people or 10 negative beliefs some people yes. might have to face like 100 or 1000 so obviously there's no one that is having a war of one by one often times mm-hmm. we are actually facing with one at least we are facing with two negative beliefs uh which means we are outnumbered because we are only one mm-hmm. right So in terms of being outnumbered the most simple way to uh to have to have the solution in here is to have somebody else to come along with you yeah or at least somebody behind you in front of you on your side on your left side whatever if mm-hmm. at least you have an accompany you don't feel alone that's the most important thing of having someone else does it mm-hmm. mean that i have to find a partner no not at all talk mm-hmm. to someone 
make friends, mm-hmm. um, have a good relationship with your family, or if it's if it's traumatic uh, to build that relationship with your family. Obviously, there are so many. There are seven billions of people in this in this world. There is more yes. probability in this world for you to find the right one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. if if your problem is that you keep having this negative belief about human beings, about the outside world. Let's say if you have a negative belief about that, oh, human mm-hmm. beings are just this world are just full of mean people. And if you have that kind of belief, obviously. No, you're never. You're obviously almost more than likely you will never find perfect friend or the mm-hmm. the right friend for you because that's what you believe. You're trying to filter this world full of seven billion people and what you keep on seeing, and you're only match with the bad ones for you. So if you are experiencing that to that level, that you are feeling like oh, having someone next to me hopeless. Okay, then you need to see a therapist, right? Yes, because exactly. obviously there's no one else that you can actually uh, gamble to see. Which is, if you're still with the negative belief mindset filter about the world, then you will only see the the negative one. Then go and see some health professionals. At least I'm not saying that they will be perfect. At least they have someone of education behind them, and yeah. they will treat you. Nice. They will treat you at least proper. Okay. Yes. So that's the first thing, because you are in a battle, right? Mm. Have somebody. And obviously, yes. health professionals or therapists, they have more tools. Imagine that those tools are just like amazing swords, amazing powerful guns, right? And you don't have yes. that yet. You mm-hmm. don't have that yet. So you have to rely on somebody else who have those tools. So that yes. you can rely on their power. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the first one. So the second one. In the meantime, while you are trying to find teammates to find mm-hmm. that battle, yeah, you need to build your spiritual level mm-hmm. because you are born, live, and you are breathing from this universe, and this universe is being created by the highest power. Yes, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, so obviously I can say that if for for any one of you who is a believer in Jesus Christ too, yes. then go too. back to the basic. Yeah, so go mm. back to what you believe in and yes. find comfort in there. Mm. You you don't find you you probably don't find a physical friend or teammates for you to fight that battle for to remind you of, ho 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 stop about your negative belief uh, yeah but you find it in a mental level but if you mm. don't if you're not a believer of Jesus Christ and that's fine that's fine go back to what you believe in if you're not a believer in any religion and that's also fine at least believe that the universe holds your back Yeah. At least believe that the universe has got your back, and that's mm-hmm. why you are here. There's always mm-hmm. a good purpose for anyone in mm-hmm. every single one of us. Out of seven billion people in this world, is yeah. in this world, in this universe, mm-hmm. and believing that you can, uh, you can be friends with the universe, that mm-hmm. it's a powerful thing. For for those of you probably think, wait, hang on a minute. That's very hard to imagine, because mm-hmm. I'm just not a believer in anything. Okay, then probably the least thing that you can actually take and gain from the universe is to mm-hmm. create connection with the nature. The nature doesn't always mean that it's the green. It's mm-hmm. it's good if you want to have somewhat of connection and find your comfort in green. Believe it or yeah. not. Every single one of us, every time we take, uh, we take some time to be in the nature, whether it's the creek, whether it's the green, whether it's the wind, whether it's the beach, at mm. some level of our our uh, our hearts, right, our hearts and minds, always yeah. gonna feel like this is heaven, or we will start to feel yeah. like relaxed at least, right? Mm. So that's. 
the feeling, the peaceful feeling that you want to create. Uh, yes. And relaxation is one of your amazing tools that you can have. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have more amazing thing, the connection with the universe, then yeah. have fun at home. Mm -hmm. Have pet at home. Yes. If you cannot trust people, trust mm -hmm. the nature. Trust, trust the create uh, trust the creature of the nature, like the plants, mm -hmm. the animal, and make them your companion. Make them your teammates in this battle of your mind. Yeah. When you don't have anyone to talk to, mm. uh, believe it or not, um, there are many researches mm. have proven that having a companionship from the nature and also from mm. the pets that we have from animals, they're full yeah. of um, what do you uh, what do you call that? The love hormones. I, I, I somehow forgot about the love hormones. The uh, I'm sorry about this. Uh, but you will definitely feel the love giving back to uh, give, uh, being giving back to you without any yes. condition, because the nature is very unconditional, and that's how the universe is going to treat you, right? So those three well, things that I can share. Mm -hmm. well, those are very simple that's... things. We, we don't really want to talk about the nitty gritty of this kind of therapy, that yeah. kind of therapy. Let's start with the very yeah, basic yes. thing. Because probably mm -hmm. right now, you are way too confused where to start. And sometimes yeah. when we feel, just like when, when we are babies, if your mental yes. health, if your mm -hmm. power, if, if you're in a yeah. war game, and you mm -hmm. are a child, Right, you have no power yes. in that war game. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're like a baby, and a baby. What does what kind of food that baby's eating? Obviously, mm -hmm. some kind of food or yes. orange. You can't just jump mm -hmm. into eating crackers or anything that's hard meat, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. those things that are hard are very nutritious, but not yes. yet for you. So imagine yeah, not... that you're in that space. Yes. Start from the very basic thing. If you go and jump into a very complex therapy just because of this therapy sounds to be super duper, sounds to be so expensive, this must be very useful, maybe mm -hmm. it's not yet. It will be useful, but one step at a time. So start with the very basic thing first that you can do and practice every day, every, yes. day, every second of your life. Yeah. Wow, I love that. I totally love that. And actually what you're saying here, yeah, this is the best place to start. You know, uh, if, do not fight alone. You know, find your, no one goes to battle alone because you go f to battle alone, you're going to lose it. So find family, friends, yeah. and people who can be a support system. And, you know, also the, the other thing I like that you say, let's find professional help because professionals will give us the tools, the right tools for, for the battle, the right tools to also help us in the journey and, you know, building our spiritual level. And I totally love that. Yes. Connecting with God or connecting with, uh, with your spiritual self and also connecting with nature. And yes, I think uh, when you're talking about nature, I remember that's actually why we go to uh, for holidays. That's why we plan for holidays. You know, we go to the beach uh, yeah. because we just, connect with nature there's something there's just something about nature walking in the uh, 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 in the in the probably in the forest there's something about uh, just going you know and and just watching the waves you know and and the, the ocean there's just something that it does to us it it calms our spirit it calms us it helps us to really breathe in and out and be able to just relax so this is amazing yeah. this is totally amazing and uh, I see our time is almost out, but Vika, you have really oh, okay. been amazing today. You've been so amazing. You've shared with us amazing, amazing um, uh, uh, sentiments today when it comes to healing trauma, childhood trauma. And for sure, I think this is something that everyone needs to hear and to just, you know, think about and start looking at what are the signs that probably, what is the one thing that maybe is a reflection of something that happened to me, you know, when I was growing up and I need to deal with it. So this has been amazing. Really grateful, Vika, that you could join us today. And I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Joy, for having me.
Yeah, <laughs> and I'm so happy. I'm really happy. Thank you for saying yes to this call. And yeah, just before we go, we'd like you to give you uh, to give us your closing remarks. Okay. So what you have to remember that you are not alone. Every single one of us out of the 7 billion population in the whole world, we all have been through a childhood. And there is yes. no childhood that is so perfect. So mm. relax, don't worry. You're not by yourself. Mm -hmm. So even if you're feeling like you are by yourself because you think probably your situation that you have faced was actually yes. the worst than others. Yeah. The only thing for you of not feeling alone like that is that by mm -hmm. speaking to someone. Wow. Yes. Imagine when you start to speak with someone, you will start to know that mm -hmm. there are people who are actually suffering more than you. And yeah. that, yeah. is, that is not in a way that will actually make you feel that you can laugh on them. No. But when mm -hmm. you realize that, you have to be more grateful. When you are more grateful, you'll see the brighter side of your life. And mm. there are also people that are above you in a way that they have yeah. better childhood than you. Okay, mm -hmm. just remember that that's the standard that you want to regenerate for the next generation yeah. of your family, of yourself, right? So mm. obviously childhood trauma is, yes, it is very important. It's very mm. provoking. Uh, into our lives, but it is also yeah. a part that is making us of who we are. Mm -hmm. Remember one thing. Uh, there are two things that I would like to share and to close uh, for today is that mm -hmm. there is no any single thing in this life that happens without reason. Wow. And whatever mm -hmm. reasons that whatever that we have in our life, that is for a good reason. Mm. Even the most painful thing is that for you to be able to be more grateful when yes. you are facing a very amazing experience. You start to feel like, oh, wow, if there is no pain in our lives, obviously there's no comparison of how wonderful our life can be. And the number two yes. is the statement that I, was, I, I, I always hold on to. Um, mm. This is from an this is from a business book, but I think it's very applicable into a, across all areas of our life. Mm. In this book, it 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 says that uh, a business or anything in our life has a very mm -hmm. basic curve or graph like this. So mm -hmm. probably this is a bit upside down. So imagine that this is the the, the curve. This is the graph. Everyone starts yeah. from the bottom. Then this. Growing up, growing up, and there will be times that we stop growing, right? Physically, mentally, yes. probably too. We we never really grow, keep on growing taller. We stop after growing mm -hmm. up, and then we went like this mm -hmm. to the sideline. Yeah. And after after some time of having on the sideway line like this, there are mm -hmm. only two options, which is going up or yeah. going down. Going down. So mm -hmm. the sentence that this book actually gave me is that when you are facing that stagnation, you mm -hmm. either want to grow or you die. Which one you choose? Grow mm -hmm. or you die? If uh -huh. you have people that you love in this world, obviously, yes, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I want to grow. And I want to grow with you. <laughs> yes. We want to grow. <laughs> Obviously, if, if that's not for yourself, let's do it for the people that we love. So wow. those two things that I would like to share for today. And um, thank you so much for here. Thank you so much for listening and participating. You are all amazing in your own way. We are all amazing because that's why we are here. Everything in this universe is meant to be together, is meant to be here. There's nothing that is so wasted in this universe, not every single thing. Yes. And, if, and if even a little grain of sand 
is so useful and it can make us so relaxed. What mm -hmm. can you imagine things that we can do as human beings? We are amazing and you are amazing. Wow, wow, my goodness. This is amazing. I totally love, I'm just carried away by what you've said. And at the curve, I totally love the message about the curve. You know, mm -hmm. that every business, every person, you know, our lives is like, like the curve. And so it's either we grow or we die. So, and because, you know, even if we, we have so many people around us, we have our families, our friends, our relatives, and for those of us who have children, even if you're not going to do it for ourselves, let's do it for those around us. And yes, thank you for reminding us something so important that we are never alone. We are not alone. Uh, the universe is not also against us, it is for us. Uh, we have many people around us who love. We just need to look around and actually we realize there are so many people who love, so many people who care. You know, Vika, I just had my birthday on um, 11th, two days ago, um, the day before yesterday. And I received so many, I received more than 100 messages, you know, happy birthday. And I'm like, wow, there's so many people. Uh, there's so many people who care. So for sure, as you said, we are never alone. There are many people around us and yeah, so we have to live no matter what we are going through, no matter what we are facing, no matter what we've faced in the past. Yes, let us desire and, you know, give, to give ourselves a chance and to know that we are, we are not alone. And yes, yes. nothing happens, and everything happens for a reason. You know, there are people who become a great inspiration and, and, and because of what they went through when they were growing up, maybe it was something bad, but they've used that uh, pain and turned it into something great and, you know, uh, they made something out of themselves. So this is this has been so amazing, Vika. I totally love this. I wish we had more time. Uh, but every time, every day, I love to read this book. It's called The Nuggets of Destiny. So every day, it's a it's a guide that I love, and I read um, for the viewers every day the 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 word for the day. So today I'm just going. Today is the thirteenth. So I'm going to just read the message that is uh, for this day. Uh, and I believe it's going to encourage us. So my message for today is, um, it actually comes from the book of First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. And this says, it actually, the, it says you are not alone. The headline for the message is, you are not alone. And let me read. <laughs> Do you, so interesting, right? <laughs> Just what you've been telling us. <laughs> I'm so impressed. So it says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Uh, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So this is quite amazing. It says, I like the part that says you are bought at a price. Just like you told us, it's good to connect with our spiritual, uh, 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 to connect with, the, with God and, you know, because we are not our own. Even the one who, God who put us here, he put us for, here for a reason and a purpose. So no matter what we are going through today, we should remember, yes, you're not alone. So that's quite interesting. Wow, this has been amazing once again. Thank you so much to all our viewers who joined us today. And for everyone who will be watching this later, we appreciate. Please leave us your comment. And also, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave a message as well. So we've come to the end of today's session and I'm super duper excited about today's session. And thank you so much, Vika. Really appreciate for making time. This has been one hour of your time and I don't You're take welcome. it for granted. So thank you so much and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I know right now it's about 7 p.m. Yeah, and it's just yeah. 3 p.m. here in Nairobi. <laughs> so I hope you have a nice evening and a good night. And yes, we hope to have you another time. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you so much, for Joy, for creating this and making this platform and making this to come true. And thank you so much for everyone and any one of you who will be probably watching this later on. I hope this all will be useful, and I hope every single day of your life, every single second of your life will always be amazing, and there will always be positive changes, okay? absolutely absolutely thank you so much everybody uh let's so let's meet again tomorrow for day 10 or 14 days thank you and god bless everyone thank you god bless you too okay thank you